Are you thinking about listing your home anytime soon? Curious about what steps it's gonna take to get your home sold? If so, stick around because... We've got some great tips and some funny stories about prepping your home to sell. So welcome to our video about how to prep your home to sell. We're excited to give you some fast tips uh, and some little things to think about as you're getting ready to list. So let's start with the exterior. Yes. So I don't think that you can overvalue getting the exterior of your house ready. It's, it's the first um, impression that a buyer has when they're walking up to your front door. So if the house is well maintained, they're going to assume that the inside is well maintained and they're not gonna be looking for problems. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that your grass is cut and don't, and not just cut, make sure you edge it, give it some crisp lines, <laughs> yes. make, it, make it look like you really care for the yard. Even if you don't have great grass and you have lots of weeds, cut it down low and nobody will know the difference. <laughs> That's right. as long a as little green. <laughs> yes, as long as it's green and it'll photograph well. Um, throw a couple fresh bags of mulch down, even if you've got to run out to Home Depot. Um, spray the weeds a couple days ahead of time, let them die. You don't have to pull all the weeds, just spray them and then throw some mulch down and make it look fresh and pretty. Um, if your sidewalk or your front steps are stained or if you've got uh, furniture on your front porch and it needs to be cleaned off, you know, grab a quick power wash uh, and power or power washer and uh, power wash it or wipe it down and make sure it looks clean. Another tip that um, I tell my clients all the time is to grab some fresh flowers or plants. Yes. And, um, and really you can go up to your local nursery and support your local nursery or go to Home Depot and grab a couple fresh plants and put them on the steps, um, throw them in some pots. You really, really, really want to give that good first impression. Also, things that people don't think about, like your gutters. If your gutters are full and there's pine needles flowing over them, people think that you're not taking care of the house. So make sure you've cleaned out the gutters. Um, throw a fresh welcome mat at the front door. Um, I love a, one that says something about being home, or sometimes I've, I've had some clients that have had some funny ones, and you're standing at the front door, and it really kind of sets the tone for walking through the house. You um, can put a wreath on the door. When we photograph the house from the street, uh, you want to make sure that it's not too busy, but um, those little pops of color can really add a lot to a home and, uh, and make people feel like they want to go in the front door and they want to live there. That's right. If you can make the best first impression Absolutely. when they're pulling up to the house, then they already anticipate that it's going to look just as good on the inside. Yeah, it just sets the stage. So really, really, really that first impression, that curb appeal cannot be under or overvalued. All right, so we forgot to talk about the backyard. Oh, we can't forget and the And we backyard. can't forget the backyard because we all know that the back, outside living spaces are huge. Um, people love to see that mm -hmm. outdoor space. So if you already have some back deck furniture, some patio furniture, whatever you have, mm -hmm. just clean it up a little bit. Make sure that you straighten the chairs around it. Mm -hmm. If you have an umbrella, open it up. And if you have cushions already on the existing furniture and they're probably a little faded because the sun does that, just flip them over and then it's like you have new cushions. Yep. <laughs> because the bottom <laughs> side looks way better than the top. Yep. And if you want a little added extra pop of color, you can always go to Walmart or Target and just look for some solid square little pillows that you can just add to the chairs. Yep. So simple, things that you can do. I love that. And I actually tell clients all the time too, I um, will recommend that they either, if they have outdoor dishes already, or mm -hmm. you can go to like the dollar store or Target and pick up like the melamine plastic dishes, something that's inexpensive, and set the place settings around the table. It looks really pretty, uh, it photographs well, it invites yes. people outside, um, and you really, really want them to feel comfortable out there. So speaking of being comfortable outside, as your buyers are walking through your backyard, please, 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 if you have a pet, clean up after them. Nobody <laughs> yes. wants to watch for landmines as no. they're walking through the back de the back grass. I have had a lot no. of people when we've gone out and we've looked at other people's homes as we're walking in the backyard, instead of looking at the beautiful home and admiring their yard and their landscape, we're looking at our feet to make sure we don't step in dog poo. So no, not attractive. Yeah. Nope. Please take the extra Please couple of minutes. <laughs> Just walk Pick through it up after your dog. and clean up a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. Good point. <laughs> All right, so we talked about the exterior. Yep. Now we're gonna move to the interior. Um, and the first thing we wanna talk about are, well, the things that we're gonna notice first, right off. Right. So things like the smells, um, smells carry in a home, and that's a they big do. put off. They do, it's the first impression when they walk in the door. Mm -hmm. If your house smells like pets, or if it smells like cigarette, uh, you have to remedy that before you ever go on the market. So right. whether it's to open the windows and get some fresh air in, if you have a heavy smoker, they make an air ionizer that you can rent. 
Um, and they need to start yes. smoking outside. Yes, smoke outside. Sure. And but throw don't away leave the cigarette the, Yeah, don't leave them outside because <laughs> that affects your exterior. Um, but yes, you need to start limiting those a little bit. Yep. Um, if you have a cat, Mm -hmm. Okay, so cats are probably known for having one of the worst smells because litter boxes just, um, yeah, yeah, they're yes. they're not. So good. make sure the litter box is freshly mm -hmm. clean every day. Yes, you need to be cleaning every it. day. Your house on the, on the market. market, you need to be cleaning it every day. Yep. maybe it, multiple times in the day because you just don't want that smell. Absolutely. To creep in. And if you can stash it somewhere where your cat knows where it's at during the showings. Um, that's mm -hmm. usually really helpful so people don't have to look at it. Maybe get used to putting it in like a certain spot. Mm -hmm. Yep. I Preparing often, for that. If you've got an extra like a guest bath, stick it in the shower or the tub and pull the curtain. And then <laughs> really? In the, in, the, in the shower? Yeah. I would think maybe the garage or something, but, but then, I would look in the shower. But the problem with the garage is if somebody shuts that door and the cat can't make it out there, then oh. you're in trouble. That's true. Yeah, stick it in the tub okay. behind the shower curtain. Okay. Just for showings. I'm not Just saying you gotta leave there, but right. yeah. So that during showings, people don't have to see it. <laughs> Good and point. then if you're gonna use air fresheners, don't go yes. too heavy on the scent mm -mm. because people think you're trying to mask something. And um, and then try not to choose floral scents. I usually recommend either a fresh linen scent or a uh, cinnamon. Cinnamon. So yeah. Even a cinnamon candle. A cinnamon candle. To kind of have yep. that going during the showings, I think can be a nice scent. It's not overpowering. Okay. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So I'm trying to think to like the worst smell experience I've had since showing homes. And I think the worst would be that <laughs> one time I was showing a sweet couple a home and we were touring the home and we went upstairs and when each of them went into this one particular bedroom, they both came out and, and said it smelled like marijuana. So <laughs> not a good, yep, not, not good. You just do not want to have people <laughs> thinking of anything much less something like that. Or maybe it is good <laughs> so, for your clients and you don't want to know either. <laughs> you don't want to know that. No. no. <laughs> All right. So another thing that people are going to notice right off the bat when they come in your house are the floors. So mm -hmm. you want to take some time and clean the floors up. Yes. If you can get them professionally steam cleaned, a lot of times, as you were just telling me, um, companies can even bring grout cleaners and you know clean the grout in your kitchen floors or your bathroom floors as well. Yeah, absolutely. The, the uh, professional carpet cleaner that we recommend all the time is a machine that will clean the grout in your kitchen. So if you're having them come out to, to clean the carpets before you go on the market, Consider having them clean the grout in your tile and it'll make it look... That always um, gets so grungy. Yeah. And it doesn't it take it much. And pretty. <laughs> yeah. And then clean the bathroom floors. I have three yes. little boys. I have to clean the bathroom floors. <laughs> um, so Me make too. Sure, yep. She's got all boys too. So <laughs> check the bathrooms and make sure the toilet seats and the floors are clean. But mm -hmm. um, cleanliness really goes a long way. And I think one of the other things cleanliness wise that stands out to me when I show property all the time is um, check your ceiling fans and your light fixtures and all the stuff yes. that's high. That you can't for touch. the dust. Yes, the dust. And mm -hmm. so if you have dust hanging from your ceiling fan, uh, it's vacuum a, it off. Yep, vacuum That's it off. A quick little trick. And also mm -hmm. your heating and AC grid. Yes. Um, if you have dust hanging from the the um, grid for mm -hmm. your HVAC system, it says to me that you're a not servicing the system, but b that you're not taking care of it. And so it creates alarm in a buyer's eye. So right. the more you can take care of that cleaning, the more mm -hmm. that they feel like you've maintained the house. Yes, which is really important. Absolutely. And even like the wall. So like your heavily trafficked areas, if you need Absolutely. to touch up some of the paint, if you can repaint the whole room, great. But sometimes we just don't have the time, the energy to even do that. So maybe it's just a little touch up that you can do, but that will go a long way yeah. as well. I like to tell people like where your kids' handprints are going to be um, or where their toys have hit the walls to, to touch up those scuff marks. Mm -hmm. But also it helps to take a little like a modeling brush or kids' paintbrush and sit on your butt with some, you know, <laughs> white paint and hit your baseboards and make those look shiny and fresh if you have white baseboards, um, because it kind of gives that, it gives it that fresh look and it looks less lived in. And uh, and people really like to feel like things are newer, are newer. even if they're mm -hmm. not a new home. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So we've talked about smells and we've talked about make sure that you clean the floors and clean your ceiling fans. Make sure you clean up. Um, but another aspect of that is decluttering. Gosh. So. That's um, the big one. It is for a big me, one. Anyway, that's yeah. what makes me nervous about selling because that's hard. It is hard. And uh, so the way you live in a house and the way you present it to sell are very different. Mm -hmm. So for photographs and during showings, you want to completely clean off your kitchen counters, ex especially for photographs. Um, you can put some of that stuff back up there when you're showing like your coffee pot. But when you're photographing, clear everything off your kitchen counters 
everything off the refrigerator, no magnets, no stickers, right. no pictures, mm -hmm. nothing on top. Uh, you want to make sure your kitchen looks as spacious as possible. And then the same thing goes for your bathrooms. If you have yes. a little decor, a little flower or vase or something like that's Or candles, decor, something simple, or, but exactly. not, not too much. Yeah, Just no, one, but get rid of your little things. toothbrushes, toothpaste, all that stuff, all your personal Plunger, hygiene products. Hide them. The toilet brush that you always keep stashed right behind your toilet. You yep. need to not have that out. Yep. And for photographs, you can just stash it away. Right. When you start showing, people are going to open your cabinet doors, so it's you, <laughs> wanna, true. you want, kind of want to make it look organized a little bit. Yeah. But it's not the end of the world. No. You, um, I would say for photographs, you want to make sure every all your surfaces are cleared off, though. Mm -hmm. um, if you have nights or if you have nightstands where you have photographs and stuff, as long as it looks pretty and it's not over overwhelming, then you'll be fine. Um, one of the other things about decluttering is if you have shoes by the front door, make sure mm -hmm. that you've picked up all the shoes and put them in a closet. Um, and the, get like a bin or a basket, something that's easy because when you know you have a showing, yes. you can run around with your kids and they can have one bin to be picking up toys and top popping them in and you can run and grab the shoes and throw those in. Absolutely. And then and there should be a little spot in your closet already ready for you yep. just to place it in. Yep, and that's a great tip for kids' toys too. I have toddlers mm -hmm. and so if I were showing my house right now, I, I, have an, I have an empty wicker basket, a big one, and I would throw mm -hmm. all their toys in there in the last minute because you don't want to tell them that they can't play. Mm -hmm. And then I would flip the lid on that because that one has a lid. But if you don't have a lid, right. find a place and slide it in the closet mm -hmm. um, and kind of make that your go-to basket that when you have showings, it's all the last minute stuff gets thrown in there and then pushed away and hiding. Um, you don't want to overcrowd your closets because you don't want people no. to think that you've outgrown the house. So Correct. part of decluttering also goes with, if you have a lot of stuff, consider renting a storage unit um, mm. and boxing all of it up and putting it in a storage unit. If you just have some extra stuff and you're decluttering, it's you can also box it up and put it in the garage. So in our area, mm -hmm. maybe not in other areas of the country, but in our area, we're used to seeing people move a lot because we have so much mm -hmm. military. And so it is not uncommon for for garages to be used for storage. We don't have basements here, by and large, we don't have basements. Mm -hmm. And so people use their garages for storage. So it's okay to box everything up and put it in an organized fashion in your garage, on the side right. wall or off to the side, rather than have it in your house. You don't want people to think you've outgrown your house, no. um, especially if you have smaller closets or smaller bedrooms. So And you can take seasonal clothing out Yep. Um, and since you're decluttering, go ahead and purge some clothes that you haven't yep. worn in a few seasons anyway and donate some things. That's yep. a good way to purge. And I Absolutely. also um, would recommend like taking things off the floor in the closet because that then gives you more depth and makes it feel like there's more room mm -hmm. and it's not overstuffed, yeah. overcrowded as you were saying. Yeah. Ultimately, a closet's not going to be a deal breaker for anybody. Mm -hmm. So don't stress it if you don't get to the closets, but these are nice little tips. And mm -hmm. you touched on something really important. If you have seasonal decor up, pull it down for your photographs. Um, you don't want to date your photographs, especially if you end up taking your photographs fairly early and then listing a couple weeks later. You don't want people to feel like your house has been on the market since Easter or since Christmas. Mm -hmm. So pull that seasonal decor down and try to make it as neutral as possible. And with your furniture, I just want to add one extra thing. Yeah. So a lot of times we have too much furniture yes. in a lot of our rooms. So if there is a way for you to get rid of a few pieces here or there, if you're going to do storage anyway, think about what few items you could take out of a room so that the room right. feels bigger. Because if you have it too full of everything, then mm -hmm. it makes the room feel small. Absolutely. I actually think that really segues into kind of our next step. First you declutter and then you need to stage, which is a whole other aspect of the ball game. True. All right, so we need to talk about staging a little bit. Yep. And the importance to get rid of any um, data decor. Yep. You wanna get rid of seasonal decor and keep everything pretty neutral toned, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think mm -hmm. that's probably the hardest part when I go into a listing is to explain to somebody that maybe their tastes aren't what are the current trendy tastes. And right. so it really, really helps sometimes to have a third party um, call Jen or I and we'll walk mm -hmm. through the house. We go through houses all the time mm -hmm. and talk to you about what's selling right now and what the what the average um, person is looking for. So really neutral is best. Absolutely, Absolutely. neutral is best. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and you can still though add little pots of color. Yep. Um, so that Absolutely. could be a throw pillow mm -hmm. or you know artwork on the walls, some yep. type of landscape painting. Um, and mirrors are a really great thing to add to your walls because it will make any space feel 
bigger. They do, yes, mirrors are great. And I like to tell people too, if you have bedrooms where you have a lot of patterns and color, or for me, like I have toddlers, so I have Paw Patrol bedding Paw Patrol. on the kids' rooms. And it's mm -hmm. okay to have kids' spaces because you want spaces to reflect the way you're gonna live. So mm -hmm. you want bedrooms to be set up like bedrooms and dining rooms to be set up like dining rooms. However, so I often walk through homes with clients and I travel with a big stack of white mm -hmm. bedding. And so if your kids have um, pattern bedding, maybe character bedding, or you have mismatch bedding and you've just never invested mm -hmm. in good bedding, take a white coverlet or a duvet and throw it over there with some pretty white shams, maybe a pop of color in the pillow, but white goes a long way. White shows up really well in pictures, photographs yes. as well. So with your bathrooms, that is the perfect color to add to your bathroom. Any bathroom will look great with white um, hand towels yes. or Absolutely. nice folded, clean, fresh linen, yes. white towels, mind you, and like a white shower curtain, a fabric mm -hmm. shower curtain is a great touch in a bathroom because it just, depersonalizes it a little bit yep. and um, makes it more neutral toned. Yes, absolutely. There's a, um, a white waffle weave shower curtain that Target sells mm -hmm. that I've used many a times. And so we have so much military here. I go in houses all the time and no offense to the bachelors out there, but <laughs> there are single bachelors and single sailors living in homes. And I have gone through entire homes, Jen, and have put white bedding, white coverlets and white pillow shams and, um, and solid color towels and white shower curtains. And, um, and it really can totally transform a house from the mismatched bedding, or I've even seen like the guys have their sleeping bags on top of the bed because they never right. bought sheets. And so um, you wanna make it look clean and crisp. And that's where Jen and I come in. So we can help you with that mm -hmm. light staging, but we also have great teams of professional stagers that we work with that will come through and totally transform a house with your existing furniture mm -hmm. if you need it. Um, and then that kind of segues into the fact that if you're trying to sell a vacant house, vacant, vacant properties often um, would Take benefit. Take longer to sell sometimes because you can't come in and kind of visually see how your furniture would fit in that space. Absolutely, if you have a unique floor plan um, or sometimes if you have a very open floor plan, which is what people desire, it is hard for buyers to envision their furniture right. in that space. So benefits of staging are um, there's a thousand benefits to staging, but one of the big ones is that people get a concept of how big the space is when they're looking online. They can visualize their furniture there. They can visualize furniture placement. Right. Um, you know, stagers are really great at being able to see the best way of the room should be laid out. Mm -hmm. And that gives that answer to the buyers as they walk in. This is how I should set up my furniture Correct. because it looks really pretty this way. And it is proven that staged homes sell faster than mm -hmm. unstaged homes. So if you don't have a real good sense of design or decor, please don't panic. Just call us. Just call like, us. We We're have all the help. resources to help you. Absolutely. So we hope that these tips have been helpful. The main thing is we just do not want you to feel overwhelmed. Yeah, I, let us help you. We do this for a living. And, uh, and sometimes a fresh set of eyes is really great when walking mm -hmm. through a home. And Jen and I will come visit you as many times as we need to to get your house ready to sell. And give us a call early on. I mean, it's okay if you're calling us at the last minute because you've got last minute orders. It happens. It does. And we can hustle and help you that way we too. Can. But if you have advance notice, and even if you're a year out and you're thinking there's some projects you want to do to get the home ready to sell, give us a call. We love walking through and helping you prepare and making that, that uh, process as smooth as possible. So let us help you. We're happy to do it. Absolutely. So until next time, have a great, great afternoon. See you soon. Has seasonal decor, you yeah. can kind of get rid of that. Oh, here's my other son coming in the video now. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Where's he at? <laughs> so we need to talk about staging a little bit. Absolutely. And the yeah. You're in the video.